Last year, I made a couple of videos on ClearPath, which is one of my favorite dependency management tools in the Atlassian ecosystem. Now, they've just come out with a brand new update, and I'm going to be talking about all the cool new features that you definitely got to check out. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And don't forget to check out that link in the description because this is one trial that you don't want to skip out on. Let's jump into Jira and let's also take a deeper look into ClearPath. Here we are inside of my Atlassian ecosystem. And the first thing that I want to highlight, and this is probably one of the coolest features, is that now instead of having to go into a Jira project and then looking on the left hand side for the app, ClearPath has made their app way more accessible. The onboarding process, the ability to get started, to, to just jump in and be productive has drastically improved. And let me show you how easy it is to jump into ClearPath and get started real quick. So inside of your Jira, you're just simply gonna click on apps. And now we have ClearPath up here. And once we jump into it, we are going to see this really, really cool animation that kind of just shows us and guides us on where we need to get started. As you can see, this flashlight, this path that is cleared up for us, get it, the name, clear path, it will take us to where our first step is. And as an end user, I can appreciate this so much because most of the times when I'm trying out these new apps from really not even the Elastian ecosystem, but just any app out there, my number one feeling of overwhelmingness comes from like, where do I even get started? And ClearPath does such a great job of like, here's a subtle, animation that points us in the right direction. And so clearly we want to get started with project. What's also new for this version is that before we were restricted, limited, if you will, on single projects, but ClearPath has made some major, major improvements. And now when we go pick our projects, we can pick one or if we are maybe a safe organization or just a cross-functional organization, we can now bring in projects from various Jira projects. So we're not just limited to one. We can click a few. And instead of just seeing stories from a single project and being able to make, create dependencies within a single project, we can now create dependencies across projects, which is really a lot more real world. This is typically how teams actually work in the real world. And so I really like this functionality here because it allows me to not just figure out the dependencies within my team, but now I can go intra company and kind of figure out team A and team B and team C and figure out what those different teams look like and their order of operations and whatnot. So this is a very welcome feature. For the simplicity of this demo, I'm just gonna stick to one project. I don't wanna overwhelm it with a whole lot of projects and we're just gonna work our way across. Now, as you can see, now that I picked my project, the UI is being updated on my behalf to kind of guide me. And trust me when I tell you, this is a really cool, it might look like a little gimmick, but it is really, really subtle, especially for new users. So this is a really nice feature that as you're going, right, it's kind of highlighting and guiding you towards the right step of what you got to do next. Because once you pick your project, now we got to pick our release. And so now we're going to come in here and very similar to last time, we can pick one release. We can pick a couple of releases. I'm going to pick just a couple. And so this is where the magic happens. Once you pick one or two releases, then the stories come to life. And now we can start managing our dependencies and we can start visualizing basically the plan that we're going to create or that we've already created for executing on these deliverables, on this project, on this initiative, whatever you want to call it. Now, I'm not going to go into much detail into how to use ClearPath because I'm going to link that original video in the description. The fundamentals of how to use ClearPath, how to match those dependencies, create those dependencies, that hasn't changed. So those videos linked in the description down below, go check those out. This video, I really do just want to highlight the improvements that they've made to this UI. So going across the screen here, as you can see, the entire UI, a lot cleaner, a lot prettier and a lot easier to navigate. And I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. And so when we come over here, I had a hard time explaining things like critical path and like trying to figure out what was the value of these story points in these sprints. And so now they're basically encapsulated in this section here that allows me to see, well, these are my story points critical path, or this is the critical path by sprints. Now this doesn't make too much sense. So let me go grab some data from another couple of other projects that may have some better data for us. Okay, so now when I click on the sprints, you're gonna see my critical path on the sprint. So these are the items that have to happen and in the order in which they should happen so that 
we are successful. So this will show you the sprints and this will show you that this is sprint one, this is another sprint, and this is another sprint. And so you do have to do them in that sequential order to maximize your chances of success. Now, one other cool new feature besides this really nice colorful view over here is that as you can see, we have a lot going on and this is an easy one, right? I just brought in uh, some data. I have 11 stories and it can get overwhelming. There's a few things that I want to talk about here in the UI. So as you can see, I'm zoomed out and this allows me to add a 35,000 foot view, be able to understand the full picture. But sometimes I need to get in deeper, right? I need to get closer so I can zoom in. And as I start zooming in, I start to see the data, the actual data of the issues. But now that I'm zoomed in, I have the opportunity to lose my perspective, lose kind of the context of the conversation here. And this new map view over here allows me to move around way easier so I can scroll and I can just zoom in and find out where I want to be inside of my project. So this is a new, very much welcome change that allows me to navigate, see at the micro, but also still at the bottom left corner, see the macro. So I really, really like that functionality. Now, one other exciting functionality that they added, and if you've seen any of my videos, you know how much I love dark mode. And so if you are in dark mode, and so if I switch my profile to dark mode, this now supports dark mode as well. So this is again a very much welcome change because I absolutely love being in dark mode. I keep light mode for my videos because as many of you like to see it in light mode, but when my day to day, when I'm using Jira for 12 hours a day, I'm not straining my eyes. So dark mode is a definitely a very welcome functionality that I really, really appreciate. Now, another new change that they made that I really, really do appreciate is that when you come in and create your dependencies, now it's a little bit clearer to understand how these things work. So if I wanted to take this AL15 and make it dependent on this AL19 before you kind of have to guess how to connect them. But now they created a chain link, which by the way, is the same icon inside of the Jira ticket that we would use to create those dependencies or link those issues together. So now I can just simply click and now look at what happens it shows me where I can link to. So the UI is making it easier for me to understand what's possible and how to make these connections easier without, again, overburdening my, my cognitive load on when I'm creating these connections, which are very, very critical. So again, another very much welcome change there. Now, a couple more things to highlight. We have the bottleneck view, which again is now a little bit cleaner, right? This, these are not new functionalities, the story points critical path, the sprints critical path, but the bottlenecks here, while it's not new, also does show us if we ever do create these opportunities for shooting ourselves in the foot. And so again, they just taken it out and it's in its own dedicated section there. So again, very beautifully done part of the new uh, UI updates here. And now to wrap up this video, I want to talk about two new features that you should really be aware of when we're looking at the specific detail of one of these stories, this is now more rich. Now, if you remember from my last video, you can always click into the story click on it and then be able to change any of the fields inside of Jira. But what you're also now going to see is that you get the little status icon. So if the stories are done, you're going to have a green check mark. If they are in to do, you're going to have this gray circle. And if they're in progress, you're going to have this orange square with a white line through it. So at a glance, you can always see the status of your work without having to guess what status things are in. And you can always see the assignee, you can see the linkages, you can see the story points, right? So all, all the critical information that you would need to make those strategic calls right here on the fly. Once you have your ducks in a row and you're ready to plan out your sprint, it is super easy to get these items into your sprint. And the best part is you do not need to leave clear path to do that. All you gotta do is select the stories or tasks that you wanna plan to your sprint and simply click on these little dots right here. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see a little bit better. And once you pick an item, you can click on the ellipses and you can either move it to a backlog, move it to an active sprint, or move it to a future sprint. And all you gotta do is hover, hover again, and then pick your either your active sprint or if you're gonna be doing some future work, you can then pick a future sprint. Once you click on it, that's it. The item is automatically put into your sprint and there's nothing else you gotta do. So from a very visual way, you can plan your entire sprint, which I think is pretty cool. Now, the last thing to just wrap this video up is if you ever get stuck, one of my biggest pet peeves is these apps are awesome. These apps that are available in the Elastin ecosystem, they're really, really cool, really, really powerful. They really do extend the power of Jira, but it can be really challenging to figure out how to use them, which is again, why I make these videos. It just helps you to learn how the UI works and some of my tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. 
But what I really like about what ClearPath did here is they have this little help button here. So when you click on this, this is going to allow you to see their video tutorials. They have a YouTube channel. You can contact them, very, very helpful folks. You can submit a support ticket. You can write a review. You can fill out a survey. You can sign up for a ClearPath email. So everything that you need is right here. And as we talk about the ability to submit feedback, I want to tell you about a cool story that I saw on LinkedIn. A few months ago on the Jira Life, we had a 24 hour live stream and ClearPath was one of the apps that was showcased during that live stream. Now, a member of the community, they reached out to the ClearPath team and talked about how they could essentially improve the app, making it a little bit more accessible, especially with respect to color blindness. So that audience member, the ClearPath team got together, they collaborated, they worked on designs, they worked on just changing the UI and improving that end user experience to make it a little bit more accessible. And I think this is such a cool story of how any app that you use really doesn't even need to be ClearPath, doesn't even need to be within the Alaskan ecosystem. But really, if you use an app and you're really passionate about it and it's an app that's really cool, but you see some rooms from improvement, these items for like contact us or writing a review or filling out a survey, it really does help make the product better. And so I think this is a really cool success story of somebody who saw a, a potential area for improvement. They reached out, they weren't shy and ClearPath engage, which I think is really nice. And I think other companies would engage as well. I know that I've given my two cents on improvements for an app and they have overnight and made those changes in production. And so I think if you're looking at these apps and you have these ideas to actually make the app more accessible, make it better, make it easier for people to use, maybe something's confusing, right? Because when you have this tunnel vision, it's hard to see outside of it and outside perspectives or outside users can definitely improve the app. So kudos to the ClearPath team for taking valuable feedback from the audience, from their customer base, and actually making those changes and showing them inside of ClearPath. All right, so that's it for ClearPath. Obviously a lot of changes, so go forth. If you already have ClearPath installed, there's nothing you gotta do. Just simply jump into Jira, click on your apps, and you're gonna be able to jump into ClearPath into their new UI. Of course, the old way is still gonna work. Just keep in mind that that's just a single project. So if you've been wanting to do a cross-project collaboration, you're definitely gonna wanna go through the apps there so you can see the entire UI, take up the entire screen. Very, very beautiful. And number two, make sure if this was something that you're interested in and maybe you haven't tested out ClearPath before, definitely use that link in the description. Start your free 30-day trial. This app, I don't say this very often. I really do try to stay as agnostic as I can with these reviews, but I'm a really, really big visual learner. I love working in a visual way and Jira is very linear, if you will. And managing those dependencies, while you can technically use the premium version of Jira to get those advanced roadmaps, you are doubling your price. So this is a really, really great alternative to not having to two X your price to go to premium and rather still have a tool that is very powerful and will help you visualize those dependencies. Because at the end of the day, these bottlenecks, these critical paths that we cannot visually see easily in Jira, right? because we just see backlogs and we see the board, but we don't see the relationships. We don't see how these stories are all intertwined. The order of operations, because trust me when I tell you, order of operations is very, very critical. You need to have these critical paths so you know which way, which story needs to come first because you can't start at the end and at the beginning and hope that in the middle it all comes together. Like that's not the right way of doing this. So if you're struggling with using Jira and you're like, I thought Jira was supposed to answer our agile questions and we're supposed to be better, faster, cheaper, try something like ClearPath because this is going to allow you to see those bottlenecks, those, those assumptions, those dependencies that you're creating that you just didn't know existed or weren't easy to see in Jira. And it's just going to take your ability to execute to the next level. So that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you give ClearPath a try. Use that link in the description. Thanks. And I'll see you in the next one.